I think we're doing it, Mono. All right, we're on. Hello, Instagram. Troy has dropped off his RockShock Boxer from his data analytic bike. He doesn't really realize that I'm on holiday at the moment, but you know, I'll, I'll do it anyway for him. Tech Tuesday with the Canyon Collective. So here we are, let's uh, let's get cracking, shall we? You're gonna, first off, what you're gonna wanna do, so with, with, with a lower service, we don't actually need to, don't actually need to uh, release any of the air from the, from the air leg. All we're doing really is just taking the lowers off and cleaning them. It's easy as that. So you're gonna grab your first hex stick and uh, undo your rebound knob. Just like so. You wanna pop that one aside for after. We're gonna have to clean that one up later just cause it's a bit filthy. Um, you're gonna wanna grab your five mil and undo both of your foot nuts. So it's easy, I find, just to crack both of them. This fork hasn't been serviced in a little while because it's been off season. So you're gonna wanna undo them, a couple of threads. Then you wanna get your trusty whacker and with a soft face, just give it a tap on both sides. And then usually they can undo with your fingers after that. So oh, that one doesn't wanna go. Another tap, there it is. Happy days. So you want to put your whacker away because you're not going to need that for a little while. Um, basically, generally the way I, I do it is uh, do one leg at a time. So this works for any any fork really. Um, obviously a boxer is a little bit easier because there's no uh, crown steering unit. So that's that, that makes life a lot easier. So you just pull that sucker out. It's pretty, like it's not too bad, but I mean, we want to look down the, down the guts of it there. It's not, not too bad at all, really. So we're going to want to grab some nice lint-free towel. You want it to be lint-free for sure, because you don't want stuff sitting all up in your area after you're finished. So give it all a clean up, um, wipe it down, inspect it, make sure that there's no scratches. This is your air leg, so you don't want anything, any, any marks on here is definitely less than ideal so we're pretty dialed there you're going to want to grab your trusty isopropyl alcohol give it a spray it just gets any residual oil off for you clean that up clean your stanchion tube while you're here because they obviously get filthy it's definitely key to clean your fork prior to the service um i didn't clean this one probably as well as i should have before pulling it apart but you go always keep your workbench clean too so you spray isopropyl we wipe that down that that blue towel is pretty much done now but we'll save it for later when we're cleaning up the outside of the fork so that's pretty much done we set that one aside um, and then we just pull our damper leg out same deal inspect the damper leg looks looks pretty all right but we'll uh, grab a new piece of blue towel there wipe it all down give it a nice bit of a spritz so all we're doing here is just to make sure that, you know, there's not heaps of mud and stuff. It's a really good time, like, particularly European countries, American countries, Canada, all that, all you, all you people that are just about to uh, enjoy the benefits of summer riding. Um, after winter, your fork's gonna be pretty flogged, so it's not a bad idea to be doing this right now. Once again, wipe your bench down. And then these are still got oil in the lowers. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull them down and drop them in the drain pan just for a minute. And then we're gonna leave them be. So this here is a tool that I use to clean lowers out. Um, it just basically scrubs it all down. So the best thing to do is just spray your isopropyl alcohol inside it. Um, and then you're laughing. So they're all drained out. So we spray our isopropyl down the, down the lowers, both sides. Get your, you can use blue towel, you can use rags, I mean, whatever. So long as there's nothing really left in the lowers, you're pretty dialed. So I just find this gets, you know, obviously we're scrubbing away a little bit, so it cleans it up nicely. Um, 
can get these sorts of scrubby brushes at your hardware store or whatever. I think this is just used for plumbing. So you can repurpose all sorts of random stuff for this sort of thing. So then we get some glue towel, clean all that up. What we'll do now actually is we'll pop the seals out. So I just use a ring spanner, a uh, ring spanner, open-ended spanner. And then pop that out like that. Pop that out like that, no worries. So they're out, they're all sorted. Wipe all that down. Um, and then the key is getting everything nice and clean. So you wedge some towel down there. Here we have, you can use a stick, you can use whatever you want. Basically, this is just to push blue towel down to the bottom and then, and then uh, have the ability basically to clean it out properly. So then you can use it to push the blue towel up through because that just cleans up all the, all the gunk and stuff that's left inside the lowers. So I do that, I use, use one piece, flip it inside out and then wedge it down the other side and use it for that side. So push it down. Sometimes you can drag it back up, but sometimes you can't. Flip it over, push it back up. So those lowers are fairly clean. What we're gonna do is spray a bit more, get more alcohol down it. Basically like, if you do this, it means that you're not gonna get wear on your stanchion tubes, um, which is obviously not, not great, not, not the greatest part of mountain biking. Um, you push that back up there. So that's starting to get pretty clean now. It's more just me pushing this in and out of isopropyl. So push it down. Push it back up, and then I would call that pretty, pretty happy, pretty happy with that. So just clean out where you, where your fresh seals are going to sit as well. Make sure they're all nice and clean and happy. Um, Today we'd make a scene that's very happy, beautiful little scene with a lot of colour in it. Very easy that you can do. What we're going to do is we're going to put them over here once again. Don't ever throw them in the bin while you're still servicing because unless they're absolutely filthy, um, you can generally reuse them to clean something. So we're gonna use some SRAM butter. My hands are slippery. And a paintbrush, super rad because you can actually get down to the lower bushings with this. So you just pull a little bit and then get it onto the, onto the bushing. Um, obviously if you lubricate everything inside the fork, it's gonna run <laughs> buttery smooth. Me being an idiot. And then on top bushings, you want to lubricate them all up with some strand butter. Again, obviously you don't want to use too much because I mean, you don't want all of it sitting in the bottom of your fork once you've, once you've put it all back together, but you just want it to be coated nicely, you know, like just a, just a gentle coating of it. That's all we're chasing. All right, and now we're ready to put this sucker back together. So you want to make sure that you are putting your damper side leg into the damper side and your air side leg into the air side. That's a massive, massive thing that people don't. I've, I've seen them be backwards before and people be like, what's, what's going on here? So pretty much we're going to put seals in first, um, obviously before you put your legs in. So get some fresh seals out of the packet. Dust foam wipers, right? So we're gonna put a bit of OW30 fluid in a jug like that. And we're gonna chuck these in there, let them soak. Oops, if I can actually get that in there. Let them soak. You don't have to do this step, but I just find it beneficial really for the end, end result. Lid back on. Always put your lid back on when you're doing suspension servicing. I've dropped them way too many times. Another sip of your tea because why not? Now, seal driver, beautiful bit of gear. Take your spring off your seal. I've seen too many damaged springs while people are trying to install these. Um, yeah, this is a super good tool. Slides in there, mint. That'll slide into your bushing, and. Um, you be able to slap the top of it with your trusty whacker. You just want it to sit, sit nice and flush with the top there. Um, generally, if you're being 
cautious, you won't go further than that. So you can generally just give them a nice light tap. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is spot on. Cool. Put these back on, don't forget them. Like that, perfect. Put this aside because you don't need that anymore. And then we will go and grab our foam seals. So here's some sort of pointy tool to pick them out. Give them a bit of a ring out, a bit of a stretch, a bit of a ring out. Pop them between your bushing and your seal in the gap there. Not overly rocket science. Hopefully you can figure that one out. Pull this sucker out here. Cool, that's that. Right, put that aside for a minute. Now, now we can actually put this thing back together. So get some, get some more strand butter. The seals come with butter in them, but honestly, it's just better just to dabble a little bit more. You want it to be pretty much coated on the inside of the seal there. You don't really have to use a paintbrush for this. This is just kind of habit for me, so. Make sure it's all nice and even. Not too much, once again, because otherwise you just get shit put down, pushed down inside your fork and you don't want that. So, air leg, left hand side of the fork. This is easy there, SRAM, super cool. Rebound, obviously. This is an air leg, doesn't have rebound. Pretty simple. So you slide that in. You can just kind of wiggle it around to get it past that, that dust seal. Don't push it the whole way down. You don't want it the whole way down yet because we're not gonna, we haven't put um, oil in the lowers yet. So same deal with this. Kind of just get it past the lip of that seal and push it through. Give it a wiggle, through it goes. So they should feel buttery smooth. Because um, that's what we've been trying to, trying to achieve. So let's grab a syringe. So you want to grab Syringe has increment markings on the side of it. Um, doesn't matter if it's rock shock, doesn't matter who who made it, where it's come from, whatever. As long as it hasn't had anything crazy in it prior to your oil or anything preferably. So you wanna pull it to 10 cc. So just a little bit back. So 10, 10, perfect. So hold your fork slightly up, put it through the hole, make sure it's not sitting on the bottom of the of the shaft and then just push it in slowly. Same deal with the other side. Put 10 cc of oil in. Bang it in the hole, through she goes. So it's happy days. Now you can push your stanchions all the way through so that the legs hit the bottom of the lowers. And you will actually, if you look in the bottom, you'll be able to see thread and thread in both sides. So that's ideal. You're gonna grab your uh, foot nuts Pull your old crush washers off. They're gone, they're done. Fresh ones in the kit. So that's all happy days. Um, you wanna clean these, clean them nicely. So this is a good good opportunity to use your old rags that you were using for the inside of the fork. Just, they don't need to be immaculately clean, but obviously the threads need to be clean. And, um, and there can't be any grit or anything underneath the crush washer part of the fork, so. That's done, that's clean. Slide your new crush washer on. That's your rebound side, it's got a hole in it so you, your knob can run through it. Thread it in by hand. Same deal with your um, your damper side. This one sometimes can be a bit more of a headache to get out, so you can use a pick and kind of get out of there. Pull this one. We're just gonna get some cutters and cut it off, eh? <clears throat> just like that. So that's what the crush washer is. You just buzz that off over here with the rest of them. Same thing again, clean it up. Make sure that there's no, no old gunk in the, in the threads or anything. Try to get rid of all the old Loctite that was in there. And then we'll buzz that off. Crush washer, fresh boy, down there. Bang, happy days.
sits in there perfectly. Thread it in by hand again. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is grab our trusty torque wrench. So it's 7.3 Newton meters, or I think it's 65 inch pounds or something. I don't use, I don't use Newtons. So you wanna tighten them up, obviously until it goes clickety clack. Cool, that's that side, same side, same thing on this side. Clickety clack, cool. Happy days, so that's that's mint. Um, then, rebound knob, don't forget this. Whatever you do, clean it up. It'll make your clickies feel way nicer if you clean it up. Believe it or not, if your little detent ball in here is clean, you'll actually be able to feel your increments and your little grooves on the foot nut down here. So this is where like a toothbrush comes in handy. An old toothbrush, you just clean them out. That's happy days. That's pretty clean. We'll give it a bit of a give it a bit of a spritz there. Oops, don't drop it, butterfingers. Slide that sucker up in there, you grab your hexagon stick, tighten her up. Cool beans, happy days. That's that. So, another hot tip, clean the outside of your fork before you put it back on your bike. Fresh blue towel, thank you very much. Seals up in there, lovely. Happy days, give them a bit of a buff. Try not to tear your blue towel in off like I do. Clean them all up. That is a beautiful RockShox boxer. It's still got a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it. All service, still happy keep going for a little while. I hope that everybody found that semi-informative. Um, we'll be bringing you Tech Tuesday videos weekly with different bits and pieces that you can do on your bike whilst you are in isolation. I know it sucks, but we'll be back racing soon enough, hopefully. And um, in the meantime, get your own bikes running dialed, ready to rip come summertime.